Let's take down these statutes and put them in a place of proper remembrance, not reverence. Four monuments to the Confederacy are set to come down in New Orleans. What is extraordinary about your film is that it's both a social historic commentary and a personal history of identity. At what point during the creation of the doc did the personal feelings start to infiltrate? Probably the moment I realized that what a documentary is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, this is my first film. So, you know, as you know from the film, I started it not intending to make a documentary, but intending to make... Uh, you know, a, a viral piece of online comedy where, you know, I'm able to use what I am watching on The Daily Show and Sam B and The Nightly Show was still on. And this was before, this is while I was living in New Orleans, before I had ever been hired on to wow. work in the world of late night. So this is me, you know, often I think our first attempts are imitations of something. And so this is me being like, let me get a mic and let me put it in the faces of folks who are going to say out loud that this wasn't about slavery and let's play with how dumb that is to say out loud. Mm. I showed some of that first footage to, um, to some black filmmakers I know who are part of this organization called Firelight Media that, you know, is all these incredible filmmakers are coming out of there. And they were like, number one, this is funny. Number two, what the hell are you doing? Uh, and, what is any of this for? You know, this, this idea that it, it's not okay just to make us laugh. Like, what is any of this supposed to be for? And, and I said, well, my character, my character has this Obama-esque hope that we can find compromise. And by talking to uncompromising white supremacists, we see how crazy their ideas are. And they said, first of all, there is no such thing as character. This is a documentary. You are not playing a version of yourself. You have to be yourself. So that mix of the fact that these statues were not coming down, contractors were leaving the job, and the, just the, the darkness of the story growing, and then my community of filmmakers being like, hey, bro, documentary, if you want people to sit with you for 82 minutes, you actually have to be revealing, and you have to have more than bits and gags. Those two sort of forces made me realize, okay, I guess I have to turn the story inward a little bit. Now, it's been said that history is written by the winners, but in the case of the Confederacy, it has been rewritten by the aggrieved losers. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it was important for the daughters of the Confederacy and similar groups to make sure the South were victims and deserved to be memorialized? Hot take, not my own take, but <laughs> did the South lose the Civil War? They lost <laughs> on the battlefield. They surrendered, right. They lost on the battlefield, but... Hmm. Is it a loss if all of their heroes right. then become our right. heroes? And right. if they get, if they become the only army with thou the only defeated army with thousands of statues, and if they have holidays dedicated to their own history, and if they are able to control textbooks and have their story become the main story that we say, is that a loss? Is it a loss if the same Confederate generals and, you know, in New Orleans, the members of the White League, two members, not just two members, the people who dedicated the Robert E. Lee Memorial, the first major public memorial to the Confederacy in public space, the two people who dedicated that monument on the day are uh, named Fenner and Behan. Behan was a member of the White League who attacked the government. These are white vigilantes who specifically were like, we're out to teach blacks a lesson. Ex-Confederate, member of the White League, he becomes mayor. Fenerer, the same dude, becomes a member of the state Supreme Court, who also upholds Plessy versus Ferguson. So the, the, the traitors who not only engaged in the Civil War, but then also attacked and killed black people and our own government during reconstruction those people didn't get punished right they they graduated they they, right. they got celebrated they became yeah. mayors and they became the power structure and as they were writing jim crow into the law they were writing their story into the land and that's how we got those monuments so that was that is the most troubling sort of realization when you look at this history that it is true and it is pithy to say how did these losers write the history? But I think 
it brings us to a truth, which is, well, the Confederacy may have lost, but those people, white supremacy, their ideas absolutely won. Thanks for the lesson, man. Uh, one of the more extraordinary moments in the film was with your pro-Confederacy friend who would explain everything historically away based on his talking points. But when you dared bring up the slave plantation monument, he screamed propaganda. So, <laughs> so much, I believe he said there's so much bullshit at that place. Right, right. Um, Which is also what enslaved people would have said about, uh, you know, plantations. But exactly. I think he meant something different. Yes. So what do you what did you observe about people like that in general where the truth is like holy water on a vampire? Um, OK, what did I what did I learn? OK, I, I learned that there is a <laughs> there is a there is a stunning, hilarious and disturbing um, consistency with which a person will say it wasn't about states' rights. And then a few minutes later, you just wait for it. You wait for it. You wait for it. They will then say slavery is not that bad. Slavery yeah. was not that bad. And you see it in the film and you see it multiple times. Yes. You see it so many times that we created sort of like a Pavlovian tracker ding of every time that right. that statement right. appears. I like but that. that is the most surprising thing that, you know, I grew up in Massachusetts where you know we knew that i knew that the story in, that some white southerners tell is different and is about states rights but i did not expect the prevalence and the bold facedness and the you know the stunning arrogance with which people i believe your word was uh you know the pomposity uh the absurd pomposity of of how folks will insist that slavery was not that bad and it's and it's wild because it's like it's like if your best friend said look man my wife divorced me but it had nothing to do with cheating. On an unrelated note, cheating's not that bad, right? You'd be like, Craig, what are we talking about? Did you cheat? No, 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 I didn't cheat. I just told you this has nothing to do with cheating. But really, in the animal world, there is no such thing as monogamy. And we really need to talk about what cheating is. Like like the, 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 the insistence with which these neo-Confederates and preservers of Southern history want to then defend slavery, the worst thing humans have ever done. Um, the idea that they want sort of sort of gives away the game of yeah. trying to argue those two things shows just how deeply invested you are in slavery. Yeah. And I think that, that that is the funniest thing and that is the most disturbing thing about those folks, that it is, they are really rooted in this idea. And because if slavery was bad, dear God, what does that mean for the holidays that they reenact and for the stories that re they retell and for the outfits that they get dressed in? So, so it's, it's, it's not a, I came in thinking that it's a matter of showing people documents and you just got to show people the truth. But for some folks deeply invested in a myth, that, that truth threatens to undermine their entire identity. This is Patrick McDowell for HollywoodChicago.com. Copyright 2021.